today we're going to talk about the difference between anecdotes and evidence. So this kind of all harkens back to this topic that we discussed previously, which I'll link to in this video's description, which is the plane crash effect. Evidence is something that actually supports a standard at a population level. So if you have a, a standard that says something along the lines of, <clears throat> if, it, it, let's say I was making the claim that like, nobody wins the lottery, right? And it's a general or, or, or it's a generalization which is useful for determining whether or not somebody should play the lottery. If I described playing the lottery as a tax on stupid because of how rare it is that anybody actually wins the lottery, say in the case of a Powerball, which whose jackpot odds are something like one in 185 million, you might respond with, oh, well, my friend Frank actually won. That's what's called an anecdote. Evidence would be something like there's a one hundred and there's a one in one hundred and eighty five million chance of winning, and even with that factored in, you're going to have to pay taxes on your winnings, and the winnings, if you lump them, are not going to be one hundred and eighty five million dollars if they're one hundred and eighty five million dollars. So in order for there to be a payoff, you need you need to have some some method of win, of um, basically buying every single possible combination of of tickets. <clears throat> and since the tickets are no longer a dollar a piece, they're two dollars a piece. What you 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 can math out what it would what your break even point on that investment would be, and you could describe it as a terrible, 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 terrible investment, unless you're going to go through the effort of somehow buying every single lottery ticket number and say um, having a jackpot that's something like one point two billion dollars that you're hopefully not going to split with anyone else. <clears throat> so those odds that I just give you and the material facts that I just give, gave you are actually representative of the population, which is that if you apply one and a half, one in 185 million to one person, you can apply that to the odds of the population. Now, that isn't to say that literally nobody wins the lottery, but as a generalization, it is fair to suggest that as evidence to the claim that basically nobody wins the lottery and that you shouldn't be playing the lottery because it's stupid because for all intents and purposes, your odds of winning are zero, would be these odds and would be the payout rates. However, your friend, your story, which is a nice story about your friend Frank <clears throat> winning the lottery isn't evidence to refute the claim that playing the lottery is a stupid idea. That's just an anecdote. That's something with a sample size of one. And generally speaking, you don't use something with a sample size of one to represent a trend at a population level. This is, by the way, something that one side of the political aisle loves to do. There was one instance of racism one time, therefore the entire society is represented by that one instance of racism, right? So the entire society is systemically built around racism because of this one incident of genuine and true racism. And let's say it actually happened in our lifetimes. That's a wonderful anecdote to explain what racism would look like. That's a wonderful anecdote to explain why it might be bad to, uh, to have this sort of view but it is not necessarily representative of the greater population. If you say something like, <clears throat> your odds of getting, uh, and you, of getting killed by a car accident over the course of a year are, say, one in a thousand, versus your odds as a black person, let's say your odds as a black person getting killed in a car accident are something like one in a thousand over the course of a year, and they might actually be because of how many people die in car accidents each year, versus your odds of getting killed at the hands of a police officer who is doing it for the purposes of being racist and for the purposes of basically genociding a race are one in several billion, then is that one in several billion then a, tr a representative trend of the population? Does that happen as often as car crashes? Is it safe to say that it is dangerous as a black person to get behind the wheel of a car? I would say yes, because it is dangerous to get behind the wheel of a car. And we know this from because of how fast cars drive, how much they weigh, and what they're made out of. And we also know this because a lot of people who get behind the wheel, which may not be you, and maybe the other people on the road, are bad drivers or maybe drunk drivers. So, so in that case, I would say that the generalization that it is incredibly dangerous to get behind the wheel could be pro could be proved true, and that a sample size of say 
several thousand people, say an entire community, and 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 making a, a generalization about the population based on a sample size of ten thousand is significantly m- uh, more credible scientifically and more meritorious of a of a method of de- making a broad and sweeping generalization of the population than. Well, this one guy got shot one time by a, by a white police officer who was a member of the Klan and explicitly said he was doing it to as a as it, as part of his um, a final solution, if you will, against black people. So, in this case, um, I, I'm sure you guys have seen it play out. So, I wanted to explain to you guys what anecdotes are. And again, there is a place and a time and a place for anecdotes. Sometimes an anecdote uh, is in the form of a joke, and jokes are funny. Sometimes anecdotes are used to derive a moral from within the anecdote. Um, so in this, so in the case of say the, the the racist police officer, you might say that this, if we're looking for what racism is, here's an anecdote. That to me is racism. If you're looking to that racist pit, uh, cop who sh- who shot and killed a black guy, let's say, um, you would look to that anecdote to say. And maybe you would describe that anecdote in brutal detail. And then that way to clue people into saying, man, this is terrible. Maybe you would use that anecdote to say, this is a terrible way about, of going about business. Because if the roles were reversed, where would you be? Right? What, this is not a good principle to stand by, that it is okay to just exterminate a group of people based on race. Because this is what that means. And if we take racist, racism to its logical end, this is where it works. So anecdotes serve serve a purpose, which is in some cases, it, but it's always self-contained within the anecdote. Uh, in the story of Icarus and Daedalus, about flying too close to the sun, if you will, there is a moral to be derived from the story itself, even though we can't use um, every time you build wings and you get a certain height to the sun, uh, you're gonna, you know, the, the wax is gonna melt and your poor kid is going to go careening to the ground. Like if we take it as a literalism, it may not be representative of a pop, broad population trend, but there may be a moral to be derived from within the story. So I hope you guys now understand what an anecdote is and the difference between an anecdote and evidence. And by the way, anecdotal evidence is not evidence; it's just an anecdote. Anecdotal evidence is something is usually is usually used as a term uh, to dismiss some sort of evidence being brought to the fold. So the only other time that anecdotal evidence might be used is if somebody makes an actual literalism about the population, say that it is impossible for X to happen. It is not. It is beyond the realm of physics for X to happen. And then you use an example of, well, we got this to happen this one time. Um, so maybe it's not beyond the realm of the, of the possibility. The, maybe it is not beyond possibility at a physical level, within the realm of physics for this to happen, because we got this one time to happen. And then you might look to why why or how you got that to happen before, again, you apply this sample size of one to a population level. So again, I hope everybody understands um, what anecdotes are, the difference between them and evidence, and I hope you guys have a, night, have a way now of applying that into your greater life. Also, be on the lookout, because we are going to have a spicy hot video where a certain person on the proverbial other side clearly doesn't understand if we're going to apply Hanlon's razor, which we've talked about, um, doesn't understand the difference between an anecdote and actual evidence and doesn't understand what the usefulness of an anecdote is in application. And remember guys, check out uh, the the um, plane crash effect because a lot of times this is uh, the plane crash effect is how the this misunderstanding of anecdo- the difference between anecdotes and evidence plays out. So you guys can go ahead and check that link is in this video's description and we'll see you in the next one.